Hello, everyone, and welcome to the National RCAP Peer Call, Preparing for State Management Review. My name is Jerry Manuel, and before we get started, I'm just going to walk through some housekeeping about how GoToWebinar works. So when you boot it up, you should see the GoToWebinar control panel, which you can minimize or maximize by using the little orange arrow button. Um, if you want to view it full screen, you can use the View Full Screen button. And then finally, uh, to dial in, if you're hearing me, hopefully you're dialed in, you can use either your computers, microphone and speakers, or your phone. Um, our recommendation is that you use your phone if at all possible. Uh, we found that a majority of the times when people are having a hard time hearing can be resolved by dialing in with their phone instead. If you have a question during the call, we'll try and answer them um, at breaks whenever they're relevant um, or whenever we have a break to bring them up. You can ask a question by using the questions box in your sidebar. Or if you'd like to ask a question um, by voice, you can use the raise hand button to raise your hand and I'll unmute you and you can ask your question directly. And we encourage people to please feel free to do this that we can have a discussion and we can be a little bit less formal. Uh, we just have people muted so that there's no background noise during the call. If you're having difficulty hearing a speaker, please just let me know via the chat box and I'll try and address it. And then finally, um, this call is being recorded. The recordings will be available on National RTAP's website on the Peer Calls page and they usually go up within one week of the call themselves. If you would like a transcript for any reason, please let us know and we're happy to accommodate that. Uh, with that, I'm going to turn the screen over to my Executive Director, Robin Phillips, to introduce the panelists and kick off the call. And Robin, you have the presentership now, so you can share your screen when you're ready. Super. Let's see. Yikes. There we go. Um, so thank you, everybody, for joining us today. And we have two um, experienced and really uh, great uh, DOT people who are planning on joining us. Um, and if you haven't uh, noticed, at the uh, in that panel on the side, there's two handouts. And if you click on the plus sign, it will give you uh, the idea, it will give you uh, basically uh, some great handouts that Michelle put together uh, and a SMR workshop workbook, which basically runs through all the questions that can happen to you during a review. Um, we are looking forward to um, hearing from both Michelle and Curtis. Uh, Curtis hasn't joined us yet. Uh, so. Uh, Michelle is going to go and give you some ideas about uh, how to work with and get ahead of the game for uh, the state management reviews that are the bane of all of our existence that really help us get things um, aligned and in good uh, compliance order. So thank you, Michelle. Um, look forward. Go ahead. OK. Well, thank you, Robin, for that introduction. And welcome, everyone. Um, my name is Michelle Nystrom. I'm the Rural Transit Group Leader for the Georgia Department of Transportation 5311 program. And um, we did have an SMR last year, so I'm going to share some of that experience with um, everyone on the phone today. Um, for those of you who may have an upcoming SMR, um, of course, the FTA, your regional office, will notify you of that, usually nine months to a year in advance. Uh, you'll know that it's coming if it's been three years. Uh, these occur uh, every three years. And so once you're notified by the FTA, then you kind of wait for the, the grantee information request, uh, the GI, GIR package. And that GIR package is put together by the FTA reviewer who will be conducting the review for your state. 
And usually these will coincide with the triennial as well. So for the 5307 um, programs, uh, usually the SMR and triennial are conducted um, jointly. So um, if you've been so notified um, and you have your GIR package, of course you're going to be extremely busy. Um, here in Georgia, we um, planned and um, and worked on the on the um, the pre SMR documents for over nine months, and um, for and and um, Robin, I apologize, I don't have my computer connection. So if any questions come in, just feel free to insert okay. those as I'm talking. Um, but you will get the um, grantee information review package, and. One of the things you'll notice, it's, it's a very large package, um, but if you will look at your SMR and triennial workbooks that are um, developed by the FTA, you will see that the GIR package coincides almost identically. It mirrors the SMR workbook um, according to the different chapter areas. So, the SMR conducts reviews in over 13 program areas, and those, uh, again, will coincide with your SMR book. They are program management, grant administration, project management, financial management and capacity. They'll look at your procurement activities, the DBE program, asset management, charter bus, school bus, ADA, Title VI. EEO, and then your drug and alcohol program. So as you are completing the GAR questions, um, you have to answer those in a way that reflects um, your state DOT policies and, of course, FTA, FTA regulations. Uh, any questions? Yeah. Well, Michelle, it sounds like when you um, did your GIR the first time that um, you you had some learning in this experience because you're talking you know you mentioned that the is it the more that you create uh, the you you have an upfront crosswalk between here's our policy and here's the reg and this is you know this is how we are fulfilling the requirements that the more completely your an that would be more complete answer and that when the actual review happened when you had those more complete um, uh, answers that it worked a lot better. Uh, yeah, that's, that's true, Robin. Um, of course, you know, every state DOT, we're required to have a state management plan, and that SMP kind of gives an overview of, of your program's policies, and it brings into play the FTA regulations. So one of the first things that the, the reviewers do in preparation for the on-site visit and, and in developing the GIR packet is they're going to review your current SMP, and they're also going to do some background checking of teams and trams from the FTA. So they're going to pull some grant information out um, over the last three-year period. And they're going to try and identify maybe some areas that they may have concerns with or that your regional office may have concerns with. And so um, in, in answering those questions for the GIR, you need to make sure that they're reflecting your SMP. And it's a good time to, to review your SMP, any internal SOPs you have, any administrative guides that you put out there maybe for your subrecipients. Make sure that those documents that you have that form the basis of your state policy, that all of those coincide and that they're mirroring one another. Um, you don't want to use contradictory language, for instance, between your SMP and internal SOPs. Um, so you want to you know, try and clean any of that up um, in preparation. Um, it's very important that if it's not documented in the eyes of the FTA, they don't, it didn't happen. So the way that they're going to check and verify is through written documented processes um, as well as looking at actual um, 
of recipient documentation um, that all of us acquire um, in in performing, you know, our daily jobs. So they will so look at all. Go ahead. Michelle, I want to ask you. Um, so when you're now thinking about it, what is your? Did you have a horizon for updating your SMP? Do you do it annually? Do you do it every two years, or do you do it every three years? Uh, the year before your uh, SMR? Well, um, I, I guess the best practice, Robin, would be to update that according to any FTA new regulatory um, changes, as well as when you have an internal policy change, it's always a good idea to um, update that as well. But at a minimum, I would say, you know, every three years, you should be taking a very close look at your SMP. And, and making those um, revisions as needed. Good. Um, so, so um, in completing the GIR questions, you have to again mirror what your actual policy is and your written documents and policies, and then you can answer them. The way you answer them will help the SMR reviewers get an understanding of whether you have a good understanding of your program requirements. So um, I found um, in answering the SMR questions last year that the SMR workbook was extremely helpful in um, showing us what we should have, you know, in place. But if you don't have it in place, then you have time prior to the, rev the actual review being conducted to, to clean up you know, areas of your program that, that may need that. But you will find that SMR workbook extremely helpful in answering the GAR questions. So I just wanted to share that with everyone. Um, that was very, very helpful. Uh, if you start reading those GIR questions and you don't know what they're talking about, then you've got some homework to do. That's not a good, good um, indicator. <laughs> Yeah, that sounds like it would be a lot better to figure that out the year before they tag you rather than like even three months before they tag you because everyone has different time horizons for implementing policy or doing policy changes. And so giving yourself some room for that would seem really important. And it may also depend on the capacity for your, uh, your state DOT office, any turnover you've had. Uh, you may have newer staff that hasn't gone through this before, and that's kind of what we were faced with here in Georgia. So, um, you know, hopefully this document we're sharing today will be helpful in, in guiding um, those of you who have not had an SMR uh, or maybe your first time. Uh, one thing that the, the reviewers do, um, they also look at your last SMR and triennial and see what findings you had for those. Uh, for the last review period. And they're going to revisit those areas and make sure that they were cleaned up and the corrective action plans have been implemented and that all is well in those areas. Um, it looks particularly bad when you have a repeat finding because it's not like you didn't know that you had it and you've had three right. years to correct it. So. Um, right. It doesn't sound like they'll give you a pass just because you have a new person there. <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> they're, they're, they're looking at the DOT and how well you're managing the funds, not how that uh, manager that's now been gone for a year managed the funds or managed the grants. True, very true. Um, so, um, you know, you'll be notified, you'll be given some dates, um, you'll be preparing in advance of the actual on-site. Um, they're going to give you a deadline to submit those GIR do that GIR document, and they'll be very specific in how they want you to submit that. Um, and it may be it may vary between the reviewing teams. Um, they didn't want us to piecemeal that together, or I mean piecemeal it to them. They wanted it and preferred it. Um, as a PDF document and send on a flash drive or a big drop box. Um, but they did not want it all messy, piecemealed out. Um, they want a complete package. 
so, and you know, it's, it's Michelle, an awful... Go ahead. I was going to say, about how long was the gap between when you were notified and when they asked for the, the packet to be returned? I believe, Georgia, we received our um, triennial packet first um, in, the, in December of 2014, and we had our review in September of 2015, so about a nine-month period for the triennial, and we didn't have quite as much time for the for the SMR for the uh, 5311 rural review. I think that maybe they sent that in. February or so. So we had maybe six months for that one. But then there was a deadline to get it back to them. Um, I can't remember exactly what, how soon before the actual on-site review. It may have been no more than two months prior to the actual on-site that, that the deadline um, for the GIR package was made. I, I can't remember specifically. I'm sorry. Is Curtis on the phone yet? Um, no, he uh, hasn't been able to join us. Oh, okay. I just wondered if he maybe knew the answer to that question. Okay, why don't we put that in our parking lot and um, when we post the, um, after the call notes, we can put uh, some information about that. Okay. So along um, with completing the questions in the GIR, they're asking for specific documentation as well. So that's when you actually have to get into your program files. Um, if you don't have scanned copies in electronic formats, you're going to be doing an awful lot of scanning, requesting documentation from subrecipients as needed. Um, so you're going to be providing the backup documentation to show that what you are saying you're doing, that you are doing. So that will take a lot of time and planning. So it's really almost, you know, considered as a project and you have to do project planning um, in order to have a successful SMR and triennial. Um, you're going to have to have weekly or even more frequent than that meetings where you're going to bring your team in to assist uh, in preparation. So you will have about nine months to a year prior to that review. Um, you'll be notified of your SMR review team, which are a consulting team by your regional, of your regional office or the USDOT. And um, the final agenda for the site visit will be sent about one to two weeks before the actual review. Any questions about the preparation or the GIR um, packet before I move on? So we don't have any questions yet, um, but I want to reiterate that people can ask them in the questions box on the sidebar or by using the raise hand button. Um, up towards the top left of the sidebar, and we can unmute people to ask questions or to discuss, you know, their experiences um, directly. Okay, thank you, Jerry. Um, one thing to note is, in addition to the training on SMR, um, depending on maybe past findings, the FTA may or may not um, be doing an enhanced review of any program area. And in Georgia, we did have an enhanced review of our DBE program in conjunction with the SMR and Triennial. So there's always a possibility that they'll come in and take a deeper look at a certain program area. So keep that in mind. Uh, in the SMR workbook, um, you will find for in every chapter the list of deficiency codes. And I just wanted to mention that those deficiency codes, and most of you probably know this, but um, wherever there's a deficiency code, that's a potential finding. So you want to build your program policies, um, I think, closely around that SMR workbook and write your policies in a way to address any areas where a finding could occur. Um, that's a good starting point, you know, for looking at your 
standard operating procedures. Um, so I would encourage everyone to do that. And again, they will like um, any data sent to the SMR reviewers. Usually they prefer the PDF files. So, um, so the first part of the review is like a desk review, and then you're, you're feeding information to them. And then the second stage of the review is the actual on-site review. So they'll notify you of when they're coming, and um, you'll have, you know, depending on on your state DOT, your leadership will make decisions as to who will actually be participating and in the room with the reviewers during the review. And this is where um, I helped in the preparation, but I didn't actually have to be in the room during the review. So there's possibly some people on the phone that have gone through that. Um, I know that it is very fast-paced, and they stick to their agenda, um, so they stay uh, on their timeline uh, in the agenda, and they're asking a quick succession of questions. You'll be likely pulling up documents for them during this time. So um, I cannot emphasize how important it is to be very prepared and organized for this. Have all of your document, all of your supporting documents numbered in a way where you're going to easily be able to pull them up for those reviewers. It will usually be a team of anywhere from four to six or more. Uh, reviewers, depending maybe on the size of your program, of your state program. And they may each have their different areas of focus. Uh, so usually you would have one or two point people that would um, be answering the questions that the reviewers may be asking. Any questions about the on-site um, review? So, Michelle, what are the things now that you would do to prepare for that? Um, well, we had a lot of documentation. Um, you just need to make sure that, again, it can be easily pulled up. You're going to have your computer in the room with the reviewers. Everyone's going to have their own computers. Um, you'll either want it on a flash drive, all of the documentation. Um, and organized in a way that would probably follow the, the GIR question format. So, you know, we organized them by chapters, uh, mm -hmm. the supporting documentation in those 13 program areas. That and sounds you know, great. Every, yeah, everyone will have a different way that they may want to catalog that, um, but that's, that's really important to Yeah, have. I know total horror stories about um, actually getting findings because when the FTA team went out to review documentation of grantees, the documentation needed was available, but it was off-site. And so that they got, basically got dinged, um, and there was a ding on the oversight that it wasn't, um, the documentation wasn't easily available. So Yeah, I, absolutely. We, we did have that occur, too. They'll, they'll ask for some last-minute documentation that you may not have anticipated. So even during the review, what was happening, even though I wasn't in the room, I was getting emails flying from leadership asking for certain documentation. And then we were having to actually go back to our subs throughout the entire state and requesting documents. So um, if you can get those documents, within the review three-day period, many times that will keep you from having a finding on that particular area. Um, if you can't, then you're likely going to have a finding. So there is even an opportunity up until to the point of the actual review and during the review to still try and find those documents. And that is a lot of what your preparation will be as well um, in advance of the actual on-site 
hopefully you will have secured the documents you needed well in advance. You don't want to have uh, a last-minute scramble if you can avoid it. So going off that, Michelle, did you do any work with your subrecipients? I mean, obviously you requested a lot of documents, but was there a process to prepare them for, to be ready for this? or? Um, um, no, we what? didn't. We didn't formally um, prepare them for this, but that that's a good thought that um, you know it it may be worthy of um, some sort of a workshop that you could develop with your subs and or a, a brief webinar, um, you know, going over the types of documents that your file retention and um, documents that we absolutely need from a programmatic standpoint. Um, you know, this is something that you do day in and day out in the way of oversight when we're giving technical assistance and then when we do our on-site visits to the subrecipients, you know, throughout the year for either a drug and alcohol review or an inspection of um, FTA assets or whatever the case may be. Um, that's also a good time to check with your subrecipients and look and see that they're documenting and, and retaining the FTA uh, files and invoicing and et cetera um, per the FTA regulations. Yeah, absolutely. I know document retention is exciting, but important to mention here. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Again, if you know you can't provide that supporting documentation, uh, even though you knew it was there at one time, it, you know you're going to get dinged on it. Um, during the on-site review, you also want to ensure that all of your staff is available. Um, if you have uh, certain people, they may be called in to elaborate on a program area for the reviewers, um, if needed. Um, for instance, if you have a compliance coordinator. Uh, they may come in and speak directly to the DNA program or the DBE or Title VI programs. Um, and then, you know, you want to be aware of the um, intric intricacies between 5307, the triennial side, and the, the 5311 SMR side. There may be some slight uh, program differences between those. and. Uh, you know, you need to pay attention to that as well, um, where the regulations are slightly different between programs. So how you answer during the site review, how you answer the questions the reviewers are posing is going to be critical in how your review goes. If they have a good comfort level and they can see the documentation, um, it, it should go well. Um, You know, it's a pretty tough review. They're usually no-nonsense. You know, I know there's different review teams out there, um, and, you know, you may not get get the same one. You know, it would be unlikely you would have the same one for two different review periods. Are there any questions? Uh, no, we're, we're rolling along. Um, <laughs> okay. If folks have a question about the handouts as well, the Handouts tab has both the SMR workbook and what we're viewing now, so people can pull those down and go back if they want to review something and ask a question. So, Michelle, I've got the document up on the computer okay. that, you, that you created, so people are being able to look at what you're talking about. Okay. Well, thanks, Robin. Um, the, the final stage, or the couple final things that they'll do on the actual site visit. On the third day, you'll actually go out into the field uh, with the FTA and the FTA review team and your state DOT personnel, um, whoever, you, whoever is chosen, to actually go to a subrecipient site and they'll, do, they'll perform a site visit. And you don't know what the reviewers are going to ask for. I can tell you what they asked for when we went out. Um, you can usually have some input into who you would select for that, or you can give a suggestion, and then they'll either uh, concur or not. Um, but normally they'll want to be within 
a reasonable driving distance of the state office. Um, but what they looked for when they went out to uh, one of our 5311 programs, they asked for the written maintenance uh, plan uh, for the FTA rolling stock assets, and they looked at the uh, service frequent the, the uh, PM frequency to ensure that what was written in the um, vehicle um, asset management plan um, was being adhered to. And so they were checking the oil change and oil filter frequencies. And if it didn't line up to what was in the written plan, then you would be cited. Um, they looked um, for things like your no-show policy. Um, so, you know, they, they were just asking questions specific to operations when they get out into the field visit. And they'll take samples. And if, they're, if the person that you choose to visit, if something was amiss when the reviewers went out, you're going to receive a finding on it, even though they may have been the, the one exception to your entire state that didn't get it right, you're going to get a <laughs> fine on that. <laughs> I know, I know. And the thing is, is what they're, the, the thing is, when I heard about this, it's like it was uh, at the Oregon DOT when they'd just gone through this and had a finding because of one of the um, operators didn't have, I mean, as I said, they didn't have their documentation available. And that to the FTA was not just that the documentation wasn't available, but that the oversight was inadequate. So that, you know, the thing is that they figure if they've found one problem, then everybody has that same problem, um, even if that's the only one that has that problem. And so I think that it, it what it really does is put a really, uh, put some pressure on you at the state DOT to develop the training and the technical assistance that keeps those issues front of mind during the year and during um, the grant making process and the procurement, all the documentation, so that these compliance issues stay front of mind rather than, uh, oh wow, we're going to be uh, we're going to be uh, reviewed in two years. Yikes! <laughs> <laughs> or next year. Next, it's usually like next year. Yikes! Yeah, and, and for the most part, you know, our, our subrecipients are very good. But, you know, again, um, at the state DOT level, one of our main object objectives is to always have FTA satisfactory and continuing control over our transit mm -hmm. programs. So um, that's a big job, um, especially when you have a lot of moving pieces. Um, mm -hmm. Here in Georgia, we have 114 different county programs. So. Um, that's a lot of paper that's flowing and a lot of documentation to track. Have you put Have you put any um, I don't know uh, processes in place in your program that have really helped you over time to be um, more ready for your um, reviews? Well, we are we're certainly addressing that now, um, and as a result of. Um, you know, af after the review, of course, you're going to have a draft report of the findings. They'll give that to you on the final day um, as part of the exit conference or exit interview. And you'll, you'll have a pretty good idea of what findings that you're going to have. So that will be in the draft report. And then, then the work begins to start developing the corrective action plans to ensure that you'll never have that finding again and, and you'll correct whatever need a correction. Um, so going forward, um, if you if you implement the corrective action plans, you should be in better shape for the next SMR period. Um, failing to do that, you're going to have the same issues that you you had before. So um, yeah, Robin, we are um, now post review. Um, working hard to develop all of our internal SOPs. And then, for instance, uh, in June, we did have a subrecipient roundtable for our 5311 um, subrecipients. And we, we hit the high, the high spots of compliance 
uh, FTA compliance during that workshop. So um, those type of um, educational um, workshops are very helpful to the subrecipient. And I think that it takes some of the mystery out of what, what we're supposed to be doing. So the, the more you can reach out and, and educate those subs, the better it will be as well. Are you seeing a lot of, um, well, I know you're talking about DOT staff changing. And so are you seeing a lot of new transit managers uh, in your programs in Georgia? Um, well, we, you know, we're, we're ha we have a lot of the same subrecipients. Um, you know, things that change sometimes here at the operational le level are the third-party operators. Um, you mm -hmm. may have some changes with the, the actual operations and the people op uh, doing those operations, especially in the larger systems. Um, you know, Georgia's continuing to grow, so we are seeing, um, you know, some more regional approaches here. And um, other than that, we're also trying to get non-participating counties to become part of the public transit system and, and begin programs. So we're doing some outreach as well. It um, seems like, you know, for people that haven't been involved with this review process before, that um, it's one of those things where even though it's not stated, basically the bottom line is if you are caught, you know, you start working in a transit system and next month there's a review, it doesn't matter that you just started last month as a transit manager. <laughs> just no. like you were talking about at the DOT level. And so it seems like, you know, one thing we could think about doing, and I don't, you know, we're talking about, you know, different opportunities with RTAP is, well, what are the things in a welcome kit or in a desk book that we could put in there? And I think, you know, just your list here is a great starting point for um, bringing to the attention of a new transit manager that there is the, a review process that's going to happen. And it's not just their local transit board, but and it's not just the DOT. It's uh, the FTA um, is going to be or potentially we'll be looking at how their systems are working to support this and you know, to support compliance. Yes. Great. So and you have to really me that was... oh, go ahead, sorry. Oh no, I was just gonna say, yeah, you just really need to do some strategic planning for that and um, to really do a, a full review of your whole program and see what's in place and what you need to shore up a little bit. Um, that was great, Michelle. It was a nice overview of the whole process and kind of what you've gone through. Right now, I'm going to unmute some of the folks who are like actively listening and hope that they'll ask a question or that they'll talk about what they do in the in-between years to make the process less intimidating. Um, so I'm going to unmute some people. And if you're muted anyway, uh, just raise your hand and I will unmute you. Um, I see we have a bunch of state people here. Uh, would anyone like to talk a little bit, share their experience, or ask a question? Is Kentucky on the line? <laughs> Ooh. I'm not sure, Michelle. I don't know the Kentucky folks as well as I'd like to. Well, I'll brag on them anyways. They had, I think, I think four different SMRs with no findings. So they're, they're one state to possibly um, look to for uh, success in that area. Yeah, absolutely. There, oh, are, I, I, there are a number of states with no findings. But there are also a lot of states that have only one or two findings where something went wrong that can be corrected, but they are in good program shape. Right. Right. I think that when we were, Jerry and I both went to the SWAT conference and they had the um, people at the, in the headquarters who managed the review process. And one of the things that came out was that, there, that most people are really pretty good, um, but that when people, some of the newer systems um, were in the position of getting these reviews and they hadn't been through them before, uh, one of the larger areas where there were issues was in procurement. And I know that many um, 
state programs have issues with procurement planning because the small, uh, what is it, this, the small dollar um, procurement, oftentimes people are not aware about what the documentation they need is or um, what that, uh, you know, what that looks like. And so they get caught out with not having uh, information in their files. Hey, Robin, mm -hmm. I'm going to unmute one of our callers. Uh, Patrice, you want to speak up? Maybe? All right, well, I'm going to leave her unmuted. And um, if maybe her mic is muted on her end, and if she figures it out, she'll pop in. Yeah, Robin, what you mentioned about the procurement, I think that um, I think it's about 29% of all findings. Um, FTA does have a graph graph showing um, the percentage based on uh, on subject area. So procurement are a huge area for findings, and um, sometimes the FTA will come in and conduct. We were talking about the enhanced reviews. They may do a procurement system review where they'll look and key in just on that area. So that is a very um, can be a very confusing area for uh, subrecipients. Um, do any of the people who are listening um, have experience with um, you know what it, what was the process for you? to um, respond to the findings and did that work smoothly or um, you know what was the what were some of the sticking points um, that were challenges in responding to uh, findings so I know Michelle you you were caught um, your program was caught with having had a program manager leave and uh, having new people in place and so it sounds like you're really doing a lot to sort of rework the way you track your your oversight and uh, are able to uh, you know capture some of the information you need and help people be ready. Yes. Um. Yeah. Post review, we're trying to reorganize our internal electronic files here and organize them in in a. a more, a more organized fashion that will help us for the next review and just to give us that historical the historical document so for the next review hopefully we'll have most of what we need already in our files. Um, so did you say that you were organizing your files in the review handbook order? Um, our SOPs we're trying to look at the SMR workbook um, by subject area when we're um, updating our SOPs or, or um, actually writing writing them. Um, so that's one way that you could organize your data. You know, I know every, every state will do it a little bit differently, um, but, but we have been working on that, getting our files uh, better organized, our electronic files. Um, once you're once you begin responding to the actual findings, when you have your report, your final report will come out about two months after the review. You'll have your uh, exit draft report um, given the, the the final day, and then the the final will come a couple months later. Even as soon as they leave, you start working and addressing your corrective action plans for any findings that you you know that you're going to have. And so you can begin immediately on developing your corrective action plans. And the FTA will allow you to close that out. If you're able to close out one finding fully, you submit your documentation to the FTA. They'll review it. And if they give the OK that it can be closed out, they'll let you know. And they'll close out the findings as you move along. But you will have an ab a, an absolute deadline in which to address all of the the findings and develop your corrective action plan. Great. Great. I'm going to oh. try and pause a second and see if we've got our voice working now. Hi, this and, is Carrie uh, Brown. Can you hear me? Yeah. 
Okay, awesome. I had to call in, as you guys said in the beginning. Um, I am not, in fact, Patrice Strack, and I'm Terry Brown. Um, I work with her in Virginia. Um, so, uh, but um, I, I wanted to, um, I wanted to weigh in a little bit on the side of FTA because while I agree completely that it is a strenuous process um, and very annoying, uh, I have never been through one uh, from the state DOT side of things. Uh, that I didn't learn a lot, and as you uh, as you were saying, uh, as Georgia was saying earlier, that the um, they really are about bringing you into compliance. So if you can fix something before they leave, they oftentimes won't put it in the report. And and I feel I've never run across a reviewer that was not there to try and help you get into compliance. So they continue to be um, resources after they leave, and we. Uh, we in Virginia have called them. I've, I've been in there for three um, SMRs uh, so far, and we're expecting one next year. Um, so I, I think all of them have really been well done and, and been very fair. Um, the only one that I would not offer that for is we had a, an enhanced review for uh, Title VI um, Four years ago, and I'm still raw from it. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm a little worried about this whole um, DBE thing. <laughs> so, right, right. The one um, thing but, that I would say, uh, with regards to that, is at SWATA, the FTA folks were emphasizing that you can appeal sometimes too. That you do have a voice even when a finding occurs. If something was, you know, you don't think that that was correct. Yeah, we we did not have that ability during the Title VI review, where I thought we were unfairly gigged for a couple of things that FTA had pre-approved. But but regardless, for the SMR, you're exactly right. And one of the um, uh, one of the things that y'all mentioned a, a few minutes ago that drove me nuts was we had this great process that we started about four years ago um, to do third-party reviews of all of our subs. And um, we we contr we look at all of them. We we actually go through the FTA spread, uh, checklist, and mm -hmm. that we have to go through. And we go through each one of them um, physically there, and make sure that we're so we can document the oversight and all of that. Well, we had just started it. We were in our first year, and they went to one of the subs that had not been reviewed yet and found a maintenance problem and then proceeded to write us up for our oversight. And they had just spent like all day telling us how great we were because of this, <laughs> this oversight program, mm -hmm. but that was one we hadn't visited yet. And so it's exactly like you said. Um, I think we got them to make it a little bit milder, um, but, uh, but yeah, we, we still got written up and, and I, was, uh, I was salty about that. Um, mm -hmm. but anyway. Well, I think that that's, I mean, I, I came out of the Oregon office, and um, that, that they had had some kind of finding like that and then had hired RLS to come in and do, over a three-year period, interview everybody and basically go through the whole SMR workbook uh, mm -hmm. with each uh, system. And I put up, I just put up the uh, Michelle's contact information where she's at, and Curtis wasn't able to join us today, but he also... He's another gold star um, uh, DOT where they haven't had any findings for several years. So these, you know, we're all um, excited and uh, as a group, or the people that I work with at, at the RTAP and the people on the board really welcome people asking questions. Um, and I think that, you know, the, the way that you responded is really, I mean, uh, Carrie, that I think the idea, I think many states are trying to figure out how to do that um, recipient by recipient process and how to implement some of those things because in the end that seems like it's the most effective strategy to make sure you're ready. <laughs> right, yeah, and so we, we actually are hiring, we're using some RTAP funds right now to have uh, one of our consultants come in and do a procurement review of us and, mm -hmm. you know, ahead of time and so yeah, because you don't want any findings. Um, right. But uh, but yeah, it is it's strenuous. But at least their outlook is right. I think their approach is is right. Yeah, and, and I, you know, you know. 
Yeah, I sat with people. So when we had RLS going on, I would sit in on those reviews with people, and it was just really helpful for me as a DOT person to, you know, be upfront and looking at how are these regulations being implemented. Uh, but it, you know, it helped me understand how well um, our subrecipients were actually working with the state program too, because. The federal program has all these rules, but you have the state interpretation and the way this, you know, the state policies and how well is that being implemented. And FTA is not going to necessarily um, get involved with your state money and how you're managing those grant programs. But you know, as a state program, we hadn't really thought about it until we were doing the federal program. You know, the program had been around for 20 years. And everyone had gotten trained in it, and everyone knew about it because they've been doing it for so long. But it's like, no. <laughs> you, all of the things that we do, I think it, it really is helpful to go through that process and see where, oh, gee, maybe we should be doing some training in this area. And, oh, we haven't talked about this in a while. Well, yeah. One last so, thing about the whole, um, uh, the whole uh, idea of in-between years. Um, I mm -hmm. think that the SMR... Um, classes, as well as the triennial classes, although we don't actually run service, are really awesome training tools. And so if I have somebody new, I try to send them to that training because not only do you find out what's being stressed in this coming year, because it's always something a little different, um, you also just get to run through all of them and have a panic attack and, and understand how complex all of it is. So just as a thought. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, we have about eight more minutes. If somebody else wants to pop up and speak, that's great. Um, or, you know, about what I got. Otherwise, um, definitely those classes seem like there's something that takes some foresight to invest in, but can help a lot. Well, yeah, and I, I put up, so now I put up the slide that has the um, RTAP contact information. and. Um, people haven't spent time on our site. We have new things that are coming up and that are available for helping um, get some of the certifications in place. Uh, we're just launching our um, learning management system. We have the alcohol and drug or substance abuse training. The FTA certification um, is available online for free. And that's something where um, you at the state level or you at the transit manager level are able to track um, those certifications, and so you have sort of an automatic documentation resource for those um, SMR reviews. So I, I guess I'm in, I'm hopeful that uh, you know, and if you guys out there uh, participating in a call have areas where you don't see information that you wish we had, let us know, or let Michelle know, or Curtis, or one of the board members. Um, it's really helpful for. For us uh, to hear where there are gaps or things that would be helpful for you in trying to um, make compliance easier so that you have more time to think about how your systems are working and how um, well they're responding to community needs as those change. Great. Um. So we're, we're pretty quiet on further questions. Uh, Michelle, if you have any last thoughts, or we can just wrap it up at this point. Um, thank you so much for speaking. Thank you. Um, I don't have any last thoughts, but I appreciate everyone, and thank you for your time today. Super. Absolutely. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. And again, the recording will be posted online at nationalrtap.org on the Peer Calls page. Have a good and day. And the handouts? Uh, the handouts will also be posted in the same place. Super. Thanks. Super. Thank you. Bye.